Tonight marks the official end of the rainy season. Of course, we haven't had much rain here in California. It was on this night that the Buddha taught the sutta of an anapanasati, or mindfulness of breathing. So let's focus on our breaths. As the Buddha said, the best way to show homage to him is to practice the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma. So let's do breath meditation in accordance with the 16 steps. They're laid out in sets of four, called tetrads. And the first three deal with the different aspects of what you're doing as you get the mind to settle down. So in other words, you're not going through one through four, and then five through eight, and then nine through twelve. You can focus in any one of the three sets that seems most at issue at any time. The first four steps, the first tetrad, have to do with the body, the breath itself. In the second tetrad, it has to do with feelings, and the third tetrad has to do with the mind. Those are the three things you're trying to bring together. Bring the mind together with the breath, fill the body, and try to create a feeling of well-being. So focus first on the breath. The Buddha says to notice when the breath is short, when it's long. And then try to breathe with a sense of the whole body. Be aware of the whole body as you breathe in, as you breathe out. Because as we'll find out in the next tetrad, you're trying to breathe with a sense of well-being, even a sense of rapture or refreshment. And you want that sense of rapture or refreshment to fill the body. So think of the breath as a whole body process. All your nerves, all your blood vessels are involved. And ask yourself, as you sit here aware of the whole body, what kind of breathing feels good? Are there any parts of the body that seem starved for energy? Can you allow them to participate more in the breath? Are there parts that are doing too much work? It's like any group of people. There are certain people who carry most of the job, and other people are freeloaders. And from the point of view of the world, the, the freeloaders are getting off easy. But from the point of view of the Dharma, they're deprived. The opportunity to make some merit, the opportunity to develop the good qualities of mind that come as you help with the work of the group are lacking. So try to get everybody involved so that everybody can benefit. And then the Buddha says to calm bodily fabrication. The question is, why does he introduce this technical term? Because what does bodily fabrication mean? It means the in and out breath. It's because the Buddha is trying to get you to think in terms of fabrication. Sankara is the Pali term. The whole purpose of this exercise is not simply to be with the breath, but it's to see how the mind shapes its experience through its intentions. And we fabricate things based on our intentions. The breath is one of the things we, we shape. There's a part of the mind that tells the body, okay, now breathe in, now breathe out. And for the most part, it goes on automatic pilot as we pay attention to other things. But it can also be very unskillful. You find yourself breathing in ways that are tight, tense. Any anger comes into the mind, any fear comes into the mind. It's going to change the way you breathe. It's as if the anger and the fear seize the breath. Then you want to get it back, get it back on your side. So the Buddha wants you to be sensitive to how your intentions shape the way you breathe, and then try to do it intentionally in a way that's calming. We read in other places that he says, first, energize the breath. This is one of the reasons why John Lee, when he gives breath meditation instruction, says to start out with some deep, long breathing to energize the body, and then allow it to calm down. 
Because if you start out already calm and just make it even more calm, sometimes you put yourself to sleep. So energize the body first and then allow it to grow calm. It can get so calm. There's one passage in the canon where the Buddha says, when you really calm the breath down, really calm bodily fabrication down, you get into the fourth jhana where there is no in or out breathing. At that point, the breath energy in the body is full, and there's no felt need to breathe in or breathe out. You don't, you don't stifle the breath, you don't stop the breath, it's just there's no felt need. If any part of the body feels like it's lacking in breath energy, Breath energy in another part of the body will come in and make up the lack, because everything is so well connected. So that's what you want to do with the, the body side of your concentration. As for the feeling side, instructions are first to breathe in and out in a way that gives rise to rapture or refreshment, breathe in and out in a way that gives rise to pleasure, and then notice Metal fabrication. Here again, it's a technical term. Metal fabrication means feelings and perceptions. Now, the feeling you're trying to develop here, of course, starts out with the feeling of pleasure. And the perceptions have to do with how you perceive the body, how you perceive the breath, how you perceive your mind in relationship to both of those. For instance, you have the choice of Seeing the breath as an energy that comes in from the outside, you can also see it as an energy that originates inside the body itself. After all, the breath doesn't force itself in from outside. There's got to be something in the body that pulls it in. That energy that pulls the air in, that's the beginning of the breath. So see it in that way. See if that helps. Get the mind steady and concentrated. Once you've got a feeling of pleasure, then you're allowed to spread. If there are any pains, you ask yourself, how, how do the perceptions make the pains worse than they are? How do they make the pain come in and invade your mind? Can you change the perception so the pain is just simply there and you don't have to carry it around? You don't have to identify it as having invaded your territory. You can focus on the comfortable parts of the body. What you're doing here is getting to the last of the steps having to do with feeling, which are that you calm mental fabrication. You find feelings and perceptions that allow everything to grow calm. So in this way, you've got the body calming down, you've got the mind calming down, and you're learning how to think in terms of fabrication. At the same time, you're doing the calming. This is one of the reasons why breath meditation is ideal for developing both tranquility and insight. Tranquility has to do with the calming side. Insight has to do with seeing things in terms of fabrication. As for the third tetra, that has to do with the mind. You breathe in and out simply sensitive to the mind. And then you notice, is the mind out of balance? If it's feeling depressed or a lack, having a lack of energy, you can breathe in a way that's gladdening, gives rise to energy, a sense of refreshment. If it's feeling scattered, okay, you can breathe in a way that's more steadying. And if you see that the mind is being burdened by something, you breathe in and out in a way that allows you to put that burden down. The fourth tetrad is all about how you put those burdens down, how you release the mind. So you start out breathing in and out, and sensitive to the inconstancy of whatever it is that's burdening the mind. And wherever the Buddha talks about things being inconstant, he also talks about their being stressful and not self. In other words, you're looking at their drawbacks. And as he said elsewhere, you have to look at the drawbacks and compare them to the allure. Why do you go for those things that are weighing you down? And when you can see both and you see them in all honesty, you realize that the drawbacks way outweigh the allure. That way you develop dispassion. When you have dispassion for these things, then you stop fabricating. They stop. 
and then you can let the whole issue go. Those are the steps in the last tetrad. So as you can see, it's not 1 through 16. Instead, you have different dimensions that you can focus on at any one point. In other words, you get the mind with the breath, and you begin to notice the problem is not so much the breath, the problem is with the mind. So you focus on mental issues. Or if it turns out that the breath is the problem, you focus on the breath to give rise to a sense of well-being. So you use these steps to give you some idea of when things are not settling down, what can you do to get them more into balance, more secure, more calm, at the same time developing insight into how the mind shapes the breath and shapes your experience of the body through the breath, and how the process of fabrication shapes both the body and the mind. And then as you do this, the Buddha says, you develop all the four frames of reference for the establishings of mindfulness. You develop the seven factors for awakening. You can bring the mind to clear knowing and release. In other words, everything you need to know is right here. As a John Fuhring once said, you can take the breath all the way to nirvana. So everything right there is in very concentrated form. Everything is there in the 16 steps. to learn how to use them as a guide to getting everything together right here, right now. A state of well-being, sense of well-being, ease, the mind steady, glad, unburdened, breathing in, breathing out. This is the state of mind that allows you to gain insight. and gives you a pleasant abiding in the meantime. It's a technique that's been practiced for thousands of years now, and it's as effective now as it was then. So take this proactive approach to the breath. It's the only way you're going to learn about the mind and how it shapes the present moment. If you just simply sit and watch things passing by, passing by, you have no sense of cause and effect. The only way you can understand cause and effect, just as a scientist does it, you do experiments. You adjust this cause and see what the result is. You adjust that one see what the result is. You breathe in long. You breathe in short. You breathe in aware of the whole body. What does that do? You try breathing with a sense of ease. You try calming down the mind. You try energizing the mind. What does that do? That's how you learn. So the Buddha talked about his awakening in its shortest expression. It was a principle of causality. And the Buddha wasn't talking about causality in the abstract. It was a causality of what you do and what the results of your actions are. Because, as he said, he teaches a path that requires a lot of skill. He calls it the karma that leads to the end of karma. So as you focus on the breath in a proactive way like this, you learn about actions and their results. And they're all right here. The actions are right here. The results are right here. So you get to see these things and their connections very clearly. And that's how you develop skill. When John Lee taught breath meditation, he would often give images or analogies of people developing skills. The teacher gives you the basic steps, but then you have to learn from the doing. And keep trying to do it better and better and better. And not rest content until you've discovered what the Buddha meant by the karma that leads to the end of karma.
the fabrication, it leads to the end of fabrication. And you do that by following the breath right here and asking questions around it. The breath is the thread that connects everything. So try to bring all your mental faculties to bear right here. And see if the Buddha was right, that it does lead to clear knowing and to release. <laughs>